Okay, so COVID and autoimmunity. So here we go. <laughs> so all I treat, it, all, it, literally 90% of my practice are patients who have autoimmunity, who have been confirmed with having autoimmunity. They either come with lupus or they come with Sjogren's. Most of them come with uh, Hashimoto's or a suspicion of Hashimoto's on and on. I occasionally treat MS patients. I mean, it's this is my practice. So early on um, in the COVID, uh, in the, in the COVID uh, pandemic, I started getting phone calls. So I, I, this, I'm going to share with you my experience. So I started getting phone calls that were typical of phone calls that I would get. And they would say, doc, I, you know, I had a trigger or I, I, got, I got sick and then my gut started feeling bad. Then I got pain in my joints. Then I got brain fog. Then my hair started falling out. Then I got pain. Just classic, all of a sudden I can't eat any food. Classic autoimmune symptoms. And there's a lot more than that. And there's probably another 200 symptoms I could go over. So, so then I would get to the end of the consultation, which I would do to see if that person was a good candidate for what we do. And then they would say, I, I have one more question. Do you mind? And I'm like, no. And they'd say, um, I got COVID. And, and then the, all, I was fine. And all of this happened. Or I got COVID and I had rheumatoid arthritis. And, and, but it was a remission. And now I have it back again. And, and, it's, and, and it won't, invariably, it was like within 24 hours that this would happen. Um, by about the sixth or seventh or eighth or ninth cell, cell phone, by <laughs> phone call I had or, or Zoom video, whichever it was, um, when they would say, oh, I have one more question for you, um, then I knew what that question was gonna be. And I'm like, okay, okay, well, okay, this makes sense because some of the original triggers for autoimmune disease were Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, HHV-6 virus, parvovirus, so viruses, uh, several viruses that have, been, um, that have been proven to trigger autoimmune problems. So I thought, okay, this is gonna be number six or seven or whatever it's gonna be. And then as time went on, I started to read, as so I have an app, that I can look at the healthcare websites of all the major newspapers, left, right, middle, and scientific, unscientific, whatever. And, I, I, and they started talking about long COVID. And, um, and I started looking at those histories, usually each one of these uh, uh, stories would have two or three histories in there. I got COVID and then this happened and I went to this doctor and they couldn't tell me and I started getting this and you know symptom and that symptom and then when he knows what it is. And I thought these people are getting autoimmune problems because I've already talked to a number of people at this point in time and they have the exact same history. I was fine, I had this, I got the virus, now my life is falling apart. Now everything's getting worse. It's not getting any better. I'm going to the doctors. Nobody knows what it is. I've been to six doctors, one for my head, one for my gut, one for my immune system, one for my endocrine system. I thought, this is my patients. So it wasn't that long into the pandemic that it started to strike me that, um, that COVID was a trigger for autoimmunity. And indeed, um, we're starting to see it come out if you read many of the articles about COVID and autoimmunity now, what you're gonna find is, is that there's, it's the medical field. So the medical field is looking for some sort of a, some sort of a uh, uh, pathogen, and, or they're looking because you may be as a, as a, as a COVID patient who got autoimmunity, who, who is asking this question, and many of you who may be watching, um, they're looking for a pathogen for each area of the physiology that gets bad. So, so the gut people are looking for one thing and the brain people are looking for another thing and the immune people are looking for another thing. But in article after article after article, you're gonna to start to see them alluding to, oh, and they think it may be an autoimmune problem. 
I, I, I think that that may in the end be the overriding thing that we see. Now, again, you know, don't start shooting arrows at me over there, those people who, who maybe disagree with it. I'm telling you what I see, and I've been seeing this stuff for three years, so I feel pretty confident at this point in time in sharing that with the person who answered this question. So if the question is kind of like, can COVID trigger autoimmunity? The answer in my world is probably yes until they prove otherwise. Because now I've seen 50 or 60 patients who have had COVID, gone into autoimmunity, and we treated them as we treated my other patients, which is as an autoimmune case, which means, yes, there's a viral trigger. And by the way, I've started reading, I've started seeing articles that are saying that the COVID is kind of like Lyme or kind of like Epstein-Barr virus or kind of like so, where the virus goes in and particles still remain. Ooh, now we're gonna like kill all the particles. No, because basically what happens is those particles remain, they trigger autoimmunity. If they're like Lyme, if they're like, which is a bacteria, if they're, if they're like viruses and stuff, and then those viruses linger. Think shingles, okay? If you know people who have the autoimmune problem with shingles, they have a virus that's lurking all the time. It goes into, into dormancy. But then that person becomes compromised. Either they get sick or they get under a lot of stress. The immune system's really busy trying to take care of that. Thus, now the virus, the herpes virus can express itself and boom, the next thing you know, you, I'm sorry, I said herpes. The shingles virus can express itself and the next thing you know, boom. And the same thing with herpes, frankly, but, but, but that's how it works. So it's beginning to look to me, and, and, and truly those of us who are in clinical practice frequently see these things before the research will verify, because proper research can take years. It really should take years, because it's not easy to do research on anything on a human being, because there's so many mitigating factors that just can't be controlled for in, in, the, in the human race. So basically, um, you'll see it in, in practice before they'll see it. So that, so what I'm doing is, I'm just sharing with you what I see, how I go about it. We have treated these folks. Uh, the vast majority of them have done well in treating them from the perspective of them being an autoimmune. It would be interesting to see what would happen, any of you guys out there who are medical doctors, if, if, um, if we started giving steroids to these people. Now I'm not, don't throw things at the, at the screen there, okay? I'm just saying that if you took steroids, if, if, if it is autoimmune and they took steroids, people would probably feel better. I'm not saying that it's a good solution for like the next 25 years of your life. I'm just saying that if it is an autoimmune problem and you gave people steroids that would dampen the inflammation that's being caused by this viral uh, trigger, that that person should feel better. That should be a pretty simple thing to, to research, <laughs> researchers. So that's my understanding, or that's my observation. That's what I, that's how I go about it in, in my practice. Um, and, and, and that seems to be the direction that the literature is going. That seems to be the direction that the research is going. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be listed, probably not in the too distant future, as, a, as an additional trigger for autoimmune disease.